Now compare that to Donald Trump, because I think everyone here knows he doesn't actually fight for the middle class. Instead, he fights for himself and his billionaire friends. And he will give them another round of tax breaks that will add up to $5 trillion to the national debt. Instead of a Trump tax hike, we will pass a middle class tax cut that will benefit more than 100 million Americans. And of course, we want to talk more about both plans. Joining me now is former Council of Economic Advisors Chairman Kevin Hassett. Kevin, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Can you give good us your you reaction to these dueling economic plans? Explain to us how you see the differences sure. in each economic proposal. Right. Well, if you right now, uh, Vice President Harris was just talking about taxes. And if we look only at taxes, then the difference between her proposal and President Trump's proposal is that she wants to raise taxes on unrealized gains, raise taxes enormously on estates, which is going to make it impossible to hand your house over to another family, and raise taxes on companies that make jobs. But then on the individual side, she's talking about her middle class tax cut. That middle class tax cut is just plagiarized from what Donald Trump says he wants to do. And when she talks about the $5 trillion cost, uh, that's a way overestimate by a partisan joint tax committee, by the way. Uh, the America First Policy Institute is going to come out with a number that's probably about half that. But that cost is almost all the middle class tax part of President Trump's proposal. And so what she's got is a big demand side policy, uh, which is the middle class tax cut. And then she's attacking the supply side, which is just what she and Biden did to create inflation. And so, you know, a few months ago, she was all over TV saying Bidenomics is working. And, and it's clear from this proposal that she believes that, because she thinks that you can jimmy up demand and attack supply, and that'll reduce inflation. But we know we tried that before. We ended up with 9 percent inflation, and we're going to head there again if those policies pass. Yeah, I mean, we haven't talked about her threatening corporations coming up with this whole idea that there's price gouging going price gouging. on and that she's going to make a ban uh, in price gouging and, and, and come up with new penalties. So the regular regulation part of her plans we haven't even gotten into yet. It'll probably be uh, higher regulations than what we're seeing now. But the Wall Street Journal yesterday came out with a piece called Kamala's Harris, uh, Kamala Harris's Tax Increases and Cuts Take Shape. The author there uh, trying to make the case that she's not only raising taxes on some, but she'll uh, cut taxes on other and leave most American taxes unchanged. I don't know if I'm buying that, because if you actually are not extending the tax cuts, most people's taxes go up. So, I mean, I guess she's trying to make it as if it's a continuation of Bidenomics, which included hundreds of billions of dollars in spending and, of course, proved to be unpopular with most Americans. Are you expecting that to take place? You, you know, I don't know what to expect to take place. It's kind of like, let's make a deal tax policy, but like we're going to choose the door record, and eventually we're going to find out what's behind it. You're on record saying that a Harris administration's economic agenda would shut down the entire U.S. economy. That's what you've said. That, that's right. It, it, and this is this is the war on capital part. So if you think about it, imagine we had a, a tax on unrealized gains. And so in order to pay the tax, everybody has to sell their stuff. And then everybody's doing that all at once. And so imagine what that does to markets. We got a 65 percent uh, tax or higher uh, on your estate. So you can't leave your money to your kids anymore. But then we've got this price gouging thing. And if you look at the details of it and where it came from, from, from Elizabeth Warren, the way it works is that the Federal Trade Commission, controlled by the Harris administration, is going to look at companies. And, and they say food, but it'll be everybody you watch. They're going to look at companies and say, oh, your prices are too high. You're making too much money. And then they're going to hit them with an exorbitant fine. And you know the way they're going to use it, because this is the way they use the Justice Department now. They're going to look at somebody who maybe gave money to Republicans. And then all of a sudden, there's going to be an investigation into their pricing. Wow. And then all of a sudden, the government's going to be setting the price of their stuff. And they'll go out of business. And I'm just saying that this is what they look to me. It looks like what their plan is. And that's the kind of thing that could shut down the economy. But the the thing that's most chilling to me, Maria, is that if you go back just two or three months, you know, and, and you can look at some videos out there of just things she said about, you know, no offshore drilling, no red meat, uh, you know, no car cars that have internal combustion engines, you know, all, all of these things that she said just recently, no fracking. Um, 
she now says she doesn't, but she's not the one saying it. It's like Axios is telling us this. And yeah. the thing that's so chilling to me is that, you know how we had, like, like people say, oh, there were three or four people kind of running the country and not letting anyone see Joe Biden. I know for a fact he hasn't had a cabinet meeting since last year. You know, so there are these three or four people running the country, not Joe Biden. And it, doesn't it feel like that's happening again? Mm -hmm. I, so, so Kamala Harris is out there with very well-established positions so that Axios, not Kamala Harris, is telling us, oh, she's got these new positions. Yeah. Well, who is it that told Axios those are the new positions? Why why aren't those positions up on her campaign website, right. for goodness well, sake, exactly. so that I can study them and then tell you, tell you exactly what they're going to cost? Yeah, it's, it's a very, right. very bizarre and, so, and freaky situation. She hasn't said a word, but her aides are, are releasing all this stuff here and there. Oh, yeah, she's going to, you know, not ban fracking. And, oh, yeah, no, she's not interested in Medicare for all. The New York Post covered today, flip-flopping Kamala copies the Don. Uh, Harris for Trump, they've got her with, with a Make America Great hat again because she's pretending that she's not really liberal and she's uh, pretending that she wants to be tough on the border. If she wanted to be tough on the border, wouldn't she have been tough on the border in the last three and a half years? You would think. You would yeah. think. But, but again, uh, I, I think the best metric of what she wants to do is what she said in the past, right, not what the, what the three or four people who control Joe Biden are telling us. Good to see you this morning. We'll keep watching all of that and maybe learn something you, from that interview tomorrow night. Kevin Hassett joining us this morning.